unfortunately, it hasn't been the first time that it happens. And I, I hate to say this, but unfortunately, it will also not be the last time that this happens. Um, as long as we continue to have uh, the current immigration policy that we have today, as long as we continue to have uh, all the push, push and pull factors on immigration, as long as we continue to have bad policies in our home countries, I mean, this is unfortunately this is going to keep happening. That when we first heard about this uh, tragedy in San Antonio, we were reminded of a very similar tragedy, almost identical, that happened in Victoria, Texas, uh, in in the early 2000s, where where the same amount of people uh, were left in the back of an 18 wheeler uh, to perish, and we see it. Uh, I don't want to say every year, but we see it very constantly, uh, where either here in Southwest Houston or in Victoria or in Corpus Christi or in San Antonio, wherever it may be, uh, people find themselves in this very precarious situations. Um, and, and, and it's just sad and tragic to think that unfortunately we're gonna have to talk about this again, hopefully not soon, but unfortunately if things continue the way they are, uh, we don't foresee a change in the near future. So there's so many ways that it occurs, uh, and that's the another yet another complexity uh, on, on this issue. Um, the, I, I mean, we'll just take maybe like the top three examples. One of them is a family member here contacts somebody that knows somebody that may know somebody who who can smuggle their family member over. They pay him uh, large sums of money. We're talking about on average seven to ten thousand dollars. Uh, to bring a person over, and then they entrust these strangers, these individuals, to to take care of their loved ones. Uh, another thing could be a person that was in in, in the home country looks for somebody. Um, they usually are very well networked here and abroad uh, to to um, make those connections and tell people, yes, this person can bring you over. Or, or lastly, and most tragically, another scenario could be where. Somebody, uh, we see this especially here in, in Houston a lot, where, where where young women in particular mostly are picked up in their home countries and then they're smuggled, they're trafficked into the U.S. Uh, to serve as, uh, you know, to serve in prostitution or other other gang related activities like that. All to say is that those are just three examples out of thousands of scenarios that could exist that could push people to come over. One of the things that that uh, in most cases we see is people just come over because things have just gotten so bad in their home countries being economically or with uh, or with the cartels or just with insecurity that they choose to take this very perilous track uh, into the United States. One of the things that we really want to stay away from or we really want to push back on is the talking point and we've seen it all this morning, a very disrespectful message by, by Republicans, by Senator Cruz, by, by Corn and by other folks who are specifically in the Republican Party who are saying that this is due to open borders. If this was an open border situation, these 60 people that died yesterday would have presented themselves at the U.S.-Mexico border said, hey, I want to come in, and they would have been let in and, and you know given all the rights and privileges, but it, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. They, for one reason or another, which we also don't condone, they chose to get in the back of, of an 18-wheeler and in essence be, be suffocated to death in 150 plus degree weather. So right now is not the time for talking points. It is a time to find solutions and to ask ourselves, what pushes an immigrant, what pushes a mom to bring her kids over on an 18 wheeler, in the back of an 18 wheeler, uh, and to potentially lose their lives in this very tragic manner? Organized crime is, is in fact bad. It's organized crime. So there's there's networks of people here on, on the other side of the border everywhere telling uh, oftentimes lying to people and telling them oh yes it's so easy just pay us this much we can get you across and they they do uh they take advantage of the broken policies the broken system in order to take advantage of those most vulnerable so we hear it all the time i mean we haven't even gotten into the cases where folks do successfully make it over and now they're kidnapped here and they're held at ransom i mean horrible, horrible things that happen to people uh, and while people are making this decision in order in the search for a better life. So basically a, a coyote is somebody who, who 
for money, usually for money, or for other, another type of incentive that brings a person over illegally into the country. Um, and so in essence, that's what they do. Their tactics can be, can range from, you know, just dropping off people here, bringing in people with, with fake documents to putting people in the back of 18 wheelers or in trunks of cars or in seats of cars and bringing them across uh, illicitly. These are very complex systems. And once again, they are uh, rings of organized crime. So they have, not only do they have drivers and they have leaders, but they also have people that go out and, and promote them in, in the, you know, Guatemala, Mexico, Honduras, wherever it may be. And then they have folks who are on this side waiting with safe houses, with, with money, with cash. There's a huge exchange of money. I mean, these are very complex rings. Uh, that at the end of the day, uh, CBP and I should do a better job at trying to dismantle these systems to, to not have these situations happen again. Unfortunately, though, it goes back to the complexity of the issue where there's hundreds, if not thousands of these rings out there, of these gangs, of these organized people that, that are going to continue to do this until we find a solution so that folks don't have to seek out uh, their guidance or their assistance or their services. I mean, and at the end of the day, those who, who pay, uh, pay the ultimate price, which is with their lives. And this is not, this is just one of the horrific ways to die. There's people that, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, a few years back, we were hearing a, a increase of stories of folks uh, of the cartels getting into the coyote game and then having people smuggle drugs and cocaine on their back and then being left to, to once they couldn't go any further, they would just leave them in the desert. Uh, and and to die and so you know a, a horrible death a horrible death that people um, have to go through uh, all because we have broken policies uh, on both sides on both sides of the border as well as on both sides of the aisle as well as everywhere uh, we want people to know that that once again this is not a, a direct result of, of open borders people throw that word around, throw those words around so much uh, that it, it just, people sometimes begin to believe it, but this is not an open border issue. This is an issue of a border that is secure that people get through because there's so many people trying to come through uh, and unfortunately lose their lives in the process. So what we should be looking for is a way uh, to change policy and to change law so that uh, if we continue to use immigrants, that they don't have to put their lives in danger by crossing in this illegal manner. And one of the things that we always talk to people about, people often criticize us and Fiel for saying, oh, you encourage people to come. No, we don't. Like, we don't want people to die. And we, when we talk to people and people sometimes approach us and like, I'm thinking about doing this, we tell them, don't do it. It's not worth it. But what we would rather tell them is that if you apply for this program that allows you to come in legally and then leave once you're done working, we would be more than happy to do that because we don't feel that, that the American dream is worth losing your life over. Uh, we really need to fix our, our broken immigration policies. I mean, for the, there's a lot of folks who are also going and then coming back because they don't have a, a legal means to do it. And, and if we would provide folks with, with legal means to do it, uh, then they would do it. And one of the reasons why people come is because there's corporations and jobs uh, and people still offering people and taking advantage of paying low wages to folks. So it really is a, a larger system that folks are a part of, uh, that there is no simple solution, but there is can be the beginning of a solution if we had, uh, if we were to revamp in our immigration laws to not have them be so archaic. We're so um, numb to these types of situations that just say, well, you know, things happen, people can expect this to happen. So folks who are actually impacted by this, we expect, uh, we, we if, you know, with all of our hearts, we would, ex we would hope not to have a person, but we expect that some people uh, were waiting for some of those folks who were on that truck here in Houston, just because of the proximity that we have to the U.S.-Mexico border, just because this is usually a route that they take uh, either to, to meet with with uh, family members here or to go to other parts of the country from here. So uh, we haven't yet been contacted, but we do expect, as this has happened many times in the past, 
for a family to come forward and say, I'm from Houston, I was waiting for my family member here and this happened. And for them, obviously losing a loved one in this manner uh, can be a life altering event. The thing that we do uh, ask that those people do is at the end of the day, so for them to cooperate with CBP and I so that we can hopefully make a dent in dismantling some of these organizations who are taking advantage of a lot of these folks who are very vulnerable. Whether, whether they contact us or contact ICE or CBP directly, if they're too afraid to contact ICE or CBP directly, they can come to us and we'll facilitate those conversations, but look for help. Don't stay quiet because at the end of the day, you, your actions could save somebody else's life.